Welcome world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor. And in this short screencast, I want to unpack document.write. Most introductory JavaScript textbooks seem to use document.write a lot because it gets content on your page quickly. Document.write can write HTML tags, content, and the value of variables. And the solution you're looking at here is from exercise 2-3 of chapter 2 of Murox textbook. I've merely moved the entire script down into one set of script tags and placed it before the closing body tag. This is a very common place for your script because after all, most JavaScript does not need to be processed until the page has loaded and there's content for the user to interact with. Now there are exceptions to that rule, of course, but for our introductory classes, we probably don't want our JavaScript to run until the rest of the page is run. And if I go ahead and run this application, it's prompting me for the length, I'll put in five, it's prompting me for the width, I'll put in four, and then it is finishing. So here's my prompt for my length, here's my prompt for my width, and then a little math is happening here to calculate area and perimeter, and document.write then is printing out this H1 content as well as some text and the value of those variables. And while document write was helpful in the beginning to put content on the web page, it has some severe shortcomings. And I want to demonstrate that to you and then demonstrate a better way to get content on the page versus using document write. In this example, I've added a button called recalculate and it's sitting over here on my web page. I've ID'd it with the ID of recalc. On my JavaScript, I've surrounded my statements with a function named calc. Now when statements are surrounded with a function, they don't run immediately upon the web page loading. They run when the function is called or executed. And that's why we surround statements with a function so that we can control when those statements are run and rerun them on different events that happen on our web page. So I've surrounded the statements with a function named calc. When I refresh my page, we do not get prompted for the length and the width as we did before because I've got those statements protected with this calc function, I'm only going to run the calc function on an event listener when the recalc ID, remember that's the ID for the button, gets clicked. So let's run this calc function, which is going to execute these statements by clicking this button, recalc. In our length, five. In our width, four. My document.write worked again. But what happened to my paragraph, thanks for using the area and perimeter application, and what happened to my button? When we call document.write from a function, it's going to rewrite the entire page. So that's a huge limitation. I'm going to remove my event listener, my function name, and my button, because those are concepts we're going to get into a little bit later. I just wanted to use them to demonstrate the limitations of document.write. And I want to show you a better way than using document.write. For the H1 content, I'd probably go ahead and just move that. Move that right over into my HTML. And then this is really four different paragraphs that I'm writing. So instead of having the JavaScript document write four different paragraphs, a better way, in my opinion, would be to do something like this. Go ahead and set up four paragraphs for the four answers that you're looking for. Length, width, area, and perimeter. Be sure to give each of those paragraphs a unique ID. Then in our JavaScript, we can declare variables that point to those four paragraphs. We're using the document object, the element by ID method, and finding the length ID. That would be this first paragraph. And establishing a variable name of length para to point to that object. And then we're setting the text content property to be length plus the value of the length variable. The reason this type of approach is much better than using a document write is that we can rerun this code and not interfere with overriding all of our HTML as many times as we want. And let me prove that to you. I'll put my button back in. I'll ID it with calc. Recalculate. I'll come back to my JavaScript, around this entire code with a function. I'll call it calc. And add back in my event listener document.get element by id calc. We're going to listen for an event, add event listener. When it gets clicked, I want to run the calc function, save, refresh. And again, because I've protected that code with the calc function, it doesn't automatically run. And these paragraphs right now are empty. I just have the area and perimeter app 
and then the thanks for using the area and perimeter application and the button. But when I click recalculate, enter length, let's say two, enter width, let's say three, I get all of my information in my paragraphs, including the rest of the HTML. Not doing a document right, which wipes out all the content on the page once the page is loaded. I can click recalculate as many times as I want and see the information change. So while document.write is great for these beginning lessons, I want you very quickly to switch over to talking to existing paragraphs and later we'll even create the paragraphs in JavaScript. But the next step would be to learn the document.getElementById method and then also how to set the text content property of that element to be whatever you want versus using document.write. Thank you.